Nothing is coincidental when it comes to mental activity. Freud. Freud books were burned. Herbert Spencer was road builder. Spinoza was damned and excommunicated. Dostoyevsky was in front of execution squad. Aristotle had to run so he doesn't end up like Socrates. Sartre wrote his masterpiece in jail. Copernicus, Gandhi and Jesus shared Prometheus's destiny. They were punished for bringing the light. As if human animal as some sociologists refer to humans is afraid of light. Fusion into oneness begins with realization of insufficiency of linear thinking, then it leads to insufficiency of philosophical materialism and idealism in itself. Synthesizing those two would be ultimate philosophical task and challenge. It's considered impossible. Resolving it would be mere metaphysical breakthrough. New ripple and expansion of consciousness, unifying multiple patterns of perception. It requires grasping individual perspectives and looking for common correlative denominator, multi-perspectives that goes beyond subjectivity of singular perspective, correlation among singular, linear objectivity into multi-perspective objectivity and oneness, oneness that eliminates relativism, speculative, guessing, need for Kierkegaard's leap of faith and superstition, insufficiency of a linear thinking, society, social organism, is unsustainable if it's not adaptable to new realities, there is no written in. 9. The Stone Ideology, everything is changing except law of change. Plato JFK, that doesn't mean individual or societal characterless, unethical chameleonizing inability to adapt and maladjustment. Societies fail because their inability to recognize necessity of ideological flexibility, linear thinking and linear ideology dries up, dies, losses its vitality, its dynamics. If nervous system of social organism that is government fails to response to peripheral two-way communication with the brain, brain itself is malfunctioning. Unresponsive brain is self-serving governmental body that is allowing its extremities legs and hands to be functional under atrophy. All evil results from the non-adaptation of constitution to conditions. This is true of everything that lives. Part 1, Chapter 2, The Evanescence of Evil, Paragraph 1, Herbert Spencer, If a single cell, under appropriate conditions, becomes a man in the space of a few years, there can surely be no difficulty in understanding how, under appropriate conditions, a cell may, in the course of untold millions of years, give origin to that human race. Volume A, Part 3, The Evolution of Life, Chapter 3, General Aspects of the Evolution Hypothesis. Herbert Spencer Every man is free to do that which he wills, provided he infringes not the equal freedom of any other man. Chapter 6, The Formula of Justice, Herbert Spencer Realty is not shopping center where one can go and pick and choose, and some shallow attempts and interpretations are doing just that. There is insufficiency of linear thinking, necessity for multi-perspective and there is observing subject matter from within and from without and science tends to observe from outside, relying entirely on rational analytical dry thinking, that is component of soul, not its entirety. Rationalism of scientific materialism and diminished spirituality as zeitgeist condition, friction between science and spiritual are not mutually exclusive and can exist perfectly next to each other. This friction is an until recently organized religion's rejection of evolutionary theory, and scientific entrapment into metaphysical materialism, recognizable in multiple conflicts like in magnitude of Freud's impact on culture. Like almost every movement in art after him was influenced by him, surrealism perhaps being one of the most adequate examples, yet in future of delusion, his scientific materialistic mindset falls short to recognize importance of spiritual perspective, if it's recognized that spirituality is coming from neurotized mind, it's necessary to recognize that sublimation of libido is intentional neuroticization in order to develop soul, self-control and character. There is hint in Habermas's exit out of postmodernistic discourse is return to modernistic structure, depth and reason as guidance over organized chaos of postmodernistic shallowness. 
Perhaps one of the strongest pro-spiritual reasoning would be that multiple cultures separated from each other have overlapping perception of reality. Regardless of their metaphoric differing, they differ in symbols used to describe spiritual categories, but not in its nature. Recognizing those antagonisms within science itself without naively disregarding it because there is component or two that seems not to fit a whole, then reconciling and recognizing of comparative religion that there are as a matter of fact minor differences rather than other way around, then reconciling science and spirituality would be where light of a reason is leading us. If you want to understand something you need to take soul out, Gerda, what science is forgetting is to put it back in. Materialistic understanding over-rationalizes life and humans too. Mater that moves, life is still a miracle in itself that eliminates will and consciousness that are unquestionable and reduces human race to just another bacteria with significant, unignorable potential of destroying itself and all life with it. It's old news that humans can destroy Earth 40 times over, without consciousness or with diminished consciousness swallowed by instinctual subconscious chances are even bigger. It's estimated that consciousness is one-third of psyche and two-third is unconsciousness. If consciousness individual and collective is unable to recognize its self-destructive potential, then there is thrums, in past danger for a man was to become slave, in future robot, with diminished spirituality of today is there a conflict between postmodern world and spirit and is there a danger of despiritualization altogether, with this core metaphysical problem between materialism and idealism some flirt, some brash their shoulders, Many run away, most never realize that it exists at all. This is approach to disseminate it without leaving stone unturned. Concept for this book formed in late 90s. It can be derived, developed, expended endlessly, but that would be unnecessary. It's self-evident, and self-evident doesn't need endless reconfirming. It would be sign of uncertainty and uncertainty is definitely not what it's about. Light and dark. Abandoned children and children of divorced parents, cold unresponsive parents are prompt to feeling guilty, they internalize guilt with that semi-conscious, what did I do wrong, divorce rate is 60%, Generation X deals with this as a consequence of sexual revolution, part of exceptionally unusual response to a grunge is parental abandonment, Kurt Cobain's father issues turned him into generational spokesman. Internalized guilt turns into depression or into anger toward external world. Psychomotoric of it can turns into viscous circle of semi-conscious seeking of joy of pain, as in getting addicted to adrenaline rush and orphans release to unhealthy, somewhat or entirely masochistic behavior. As in, I am not suicidal but my behavior is, from drug addiction book. She is realizing that she is being swallowed by self-destructive subconscious psychomotoric. That is more or less general knowledge. Dalai Lama is stressing issue of parental care in his recent lectures. External guilt projection turns into addiction to violence, and that viscous spinning appears to look like sadistic individual is subconsciously trying to deal with the guilt by going back to its source and repeating it sadomasochistically. Inability to get rid of guilt make one going under and starting to feed on it, he is healing pain of guilt with more of it that develops into pathological addiction to causing and watching pain of others. It realizes this endorphins and biochemical dependency is forming. By regressing origins of it appears that there is huge likelihood that individual like that was abused as child, cannot deal with the pain and humiliation of it other than by subconscious need to go over and over back to original trauma. As it's been recognized abused has a tendency to become abuser if he didn't found a way to deal with it. That brain chemistry dependency can be developed as professional deformation as it most definitely happened in case of FBI agent who turned out one of the most famous serial killers or in link between veterans and domestic violence. Exiting this psychomotoric is resurfacing with one's consciousness out of subconscious. In superego ego id interrelation ego was swallowed by id. Understanding is healing. Freud what is art if one cannot understand its meaning in its entirety, depth, 
its source. As Dare Ida said to paraphrase it he wishes that he was digging more broadly from different minefields rather than from one, it's necessary to see subject from different sources and perspectives. Entire 20th century art is influenced by Freud, philosophy analyses and influences art movements, social condition in which work of art was made can dissect it deeper, its two-way street influence of culture on its time and time as a source of culture. All humanities disciplines art, philosophy, psychology, sociology are intertwined, influenced by each other, and dependent of each other. Freud's considered by some the most controversial works, discomfort in culture is talking about somewhat disturbing observation that there is or might be self-destructive collective subconscious current, instinct of death, written in between world wars. If art is a mirror, Shakespeare, and art is a lie about truth, Picasso, then art recorders zeitgeist of its time, and precursor of WWII was postmodernism, depiction of disorder. Interestingly enough there was art exhibition called Degenerate Art by those who saw opportunity in disorder rather than potential problem. As any other concept once we grasp Freud's core idea rest of it is derived from it, it's possible to almost predict what he will say about any other issue. Interesting is path of other paintings too. French were hiding some of it from Nazis. Nazis were collecting it for themselves. Entire train composition full of paintings was found abandoned. A lot of it is kept today in Philadelphia's museum. Later on at some point single man stole Mona Lisa from Louvre and took it to Italy with explanation. It's Italy where it belongs to. Some masterpieces were never recovered like from more recently Boston Museum robbery where experts on art theft fell short. Politics and art intertwine also with Diego Rivera. He took in rejected Traki who was later killed with an axe by Russians and painted Lenin in corporate hallway. Thing about psychological literature that might needs to be addressed is that it appears offensive, too personal, even morbid, only professionals who deal with it on a daily basis can desensitize to that negative initial impression of psychology. Therefore there are unsubstantiated responses to it like Sartre's rejection of psychoanalysis on misleading, misunderstood, if it's unconscious how I can be aware of it, paraf. That morbidity is not coming from psychology itself it's coming from morbidity of mental disorder, so blaming or rejecting psychological findings for emotional impression rather than on intellectual perception is unsubstantiated and naive. Correlative might be here in Baumgarten's aesthetics where everything has its emotional and intellectual aspect to it. Aesthetically, intuitively need for multi-perspective is in cubism, cubistic aesthetics and theater can be found in Strindberg's theatrical concepts. Further parallel is in Giordano Bruno's, emotional and intellectual are criteria for understanding, although emotional is less perfect while reason penetrates in core of a thing's grillic lexicon of philosophers. Strindberg's conception of history. Harry Victor Emmanuel Pomblad. Picasso, aficionado, 1912. Cubism is considered highly intellectual rather than emotional. So is Strindberg, he is considered one of the kings of theatrical form, dream play has cubistic multidimensional structure and concept. Therefore it's Apollonian in nature rather than Dionysian. In musical form multidimensional can be found in jazz, Coltrane, Picasso and Strindberg are each other's contemporaries and it can be recognized as an exemplary depiction of same aesthetic standard form zeitgeist in different artistic forms that creates, shapes artistic movement, artistic, aesthetic breakthrough that spreads through other art forms. Other important characteristic of it is young in serendipity, recognition of spontaneity, intuitive randomness, discovery through intuition over craft-like repetition, whether it's aesthetic of scientific approach of seeking real and truth. Freud's impact on pretty much any art form after him is enormous, he is behind surrealism and its spontaneous randomness, James Joyce's, Thomas Mann's like seeking meaningful through allowing subconscious intentionally to surface and shape itself, Thomas Mann's stream of consciousness movement in fiction was directly initiated by Freud.
Not all styles are exclusive of each other. It's possible to recognize modernistic objectives in postmodernistic work. It's gravitas of a work that gives it a label. If one is able to avoid ending in sinister blindness from lack of intellectual sensibility, it's possible to recognize that those artistic movements are contemporary cultural, intellectual, perceptive peaks, and significantly recognize.